When it comes to car and home insurance, don't we deserve better? I know I do. I put my policy to test and turned to Gabby. Now, I know for me, after I logged in to Gabby with my insurance provider, I was shown three quotes and saw that I could be saving $150 after using Gabby's services. I had no idea about this before Gabby and was super thankful that I was able to now save money. Put your policy to the test like I did. Get a better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check and there's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash killer. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash killer. Killer, gabby.com slash killer hey guys what's up it's savannah welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a true crime video here we have an absolutely crazy one to talk about today today we are discussing the unsolved death of tim mcnamara this is a case that i had never heard of before and it is one that is filled with so many different twists and turns and it's a roller coaster so i hope you guys are ready for a crazy one today and with that being said let's jump right on into it now this case starts in 2012 with a man named tim mcnamara who goes by the name mac and that is what we are going to be referring to him as throughout the rest of the video now mac at this time owned an apple orchard in Soap Lake, Washington. And in Soap Lake, the McNamara family was a well-known family. Soap Lake was a smaller town with about 2,000 people in it, and the McNamaras were pretty well-known throughout it. And they were a really well-liked family. At the time, the family consisted of Mac McNamara, as well as his wife, Vicki, and their two children, Caleb and Jennifer. However, in 2012, Mac and Vicki decided to go their separate ways, and get a divorce. This would be Mac's third divorce. And this is when a woman named Tracy Nessel comes into the picture. For the first 17 years of her life, Tracy also lived in Soap Lake. However, she lived on the opposite side of town and then moved to North Carolina when she was 17 years old. Now, while she lived in Soap Lake, Tracy really did suffer from having an identity crisis, as she calls it, because her family life was anything but perfect. Tracy was raised by a single mother and her father rejected her and completely just didn't believe that Tracy was his daughter. So he wanted absolutely nothing to do with her. Growing up, Tracy always knew of the McNamara family. Like I said, they were a pretty well-known family throughout the town. And she said that she was always very intrigued by them. She always wanted to know more about them. They seemed to have a very picturesque, idyllic family life. And that was something that she really wanted. So because of that, she did want to be a part of the McNamara McNamara family. However, once she moved to North Carolina, she did basically just start her own new life. She got into a new relationship and she had a daughter. So things were seemingly going well for Tracy at this time. However, one day in 2012, Tracy received a letter in the mail. And this letter was actually a wedding invitation to Jennifer McNamara's wedding. Again, Jennifer is Mac McNamara's daughter. And when Tracy received this invitation, she said she was absolutely thrilled to receive an invitation like this. She was so excited. She was really surprised that she was invited in general. However, once she received the invitation, she knew that this was something that she wanted to attend. And this is where everything really changes for Tracy and Mac McNamara, because at this wedding is when Tracy said the two of them basically fell in love with each other. It was love at first sight. Tracy said she instantly felt a connection to Mac, and she said that Mac also reciprocated those exact same feelings for her. However, at this time, again, Mac was going through his third divorce and Tracy still had a relationship and her daughter and an entire life back in North Carolina. So it wasn't the right time for them to start dating. However, Tracy didn't really want to wait any longer. She ended up ending things with the person that she was in a relationship with at the time and basically moved to Soap Lake to be with Mac again. And at that point, his relationship was basically fine. Finalized, so the two of them got together again. This was in 2012 and Tracy at this time was 44 years old and Mac was 66 years old a quote from Tracy regarding her and Mac's relationship says quote it just fit fit like a glove it was magical end quote. And Tracy really describes her connection with Mac as being a very soulful connection and a very spiritual connection. She describes them as full on soulmates, but there is a catch in all of this. And the catch in all of this is that Mac McNamara is actually Tracy's biological 
uncle. Let me repeat that. Mac McNamara is Tracy's biological uncle and both Mac and Tracy were very, very well aware of this fact at that time. But let me kind of explain to you this family dynamic because I know that just kind of came out of nowhere. So Mac McNamara's brother is a man named Denny McNamara and Denny McNamara is Tracy's biological father. However, again, because Tracy's father basically rejected her from the very beginning, she never had a real close relationship with the McNamara family. That side of the family, she was never really around at all. Tracy says, quote, I didn't know him as my uncle. I didn't know the McNamaras very much. He was the man I fell in love with. Our souls connected end quote. So Mac is dating his niece and Tracy is dating her uncle and the two of them don't seem to have a problem with this. However, their family, the McNamara family had a very, very big problem with this. Mac's children were not happy with this whatsoever. The people in the town were gossiping and we will get to that more in a second. But a really concerning thing for Mac's children in particular was that just a couple months after Mac and Tracy started dating, Mac actually transferred all of his property that was in his name. He then renamed it and transferred all of that property into Tracy's name. This included the house that Mac lived in in Soap Lake, Washington, two extra pieces of land that he has, as well as his apple orchard farm. And something to know about Mac and this apple orchard farm is that he was obsessed with it. This apple orchard was his pride and joy. He loved the fact that it was the McNamara family apple orchard. The whole idea of it being a family run business was really something he was proud of and he was incredibly invested in it. And that's why it was so surprising to Mac's children when he so easily seemed to have handed all of the property that he had over to Tracy. However, Mac's lawyer said that the reason that he did that was because Mac was worried that his own children were going to sell the apple orchard and all the other pieces of land and he didn't want that to happen and he knew that if he gave the property to Tracy, she wouldn't do that. Now again, like I said, once word got out that Mac was dating his niece, the town of Soap Lake was not happy. Mac's children weren't happy. Soap Lake wasn't happy. No one was happy by this piece of information. And so because of this, Mac and Tracy decided that they wanted to get as far away from Soap Lake, Washington as possible. So they packed up all of their belongings in 2013 and they moved to Belize. Once they got to Belize, Mac then purchased a 50 acre farm that he was planning to turn into a bed and breakfast with Tracy. It was going to be their business that they ran out of Belize and the bed and breakfast breakfast, this 50 acre piece of land was also put under Tracy's name. And in 2014, Mac also rewrote his entire will and stated in his will that he wanted everything to be Tracy's. He said, quote, when I die, I wish to leave all I own to my life partner, Tracy Nestle McNamara. All life insurance and personal property and real estate I leave to her. End quote. Now, after about a year of living in Belize, Mac and Tracy ended up having a marriage ceremony. However, there is a catch to this because under the law of Belize, Mac and Tracy were not able to be legally married because they were too close in relation to each other. The law of Belize says that you can't marry someone who you are blood related to, or at least that closely blood related to. This was not some distant cousin or distant uncle. This was Tracy's first uncle. So Belize said, not going to happen. And the marriage was not legal. Now, in terms of financially, in 2014, Mac and Tracy were really, really struggling financially. Tracy was not working. They had the bed and breakfast, but Mac was the one with the money. All of the money that they were using was Mac's money. And in 2014, it came to a point in time where they only had one week to get their bed and breakfast up and running before they were going to be forced to shut the entire operation down and be completely broke. So Mac's children ended up getting wind of the fact that his father was really struggling financially and they started emailing each other back back and forth. And this is when Mac's children suggested to Mac that it would be a good idea for him to sell his apple orchard. This apple orchard was worth about 1.5 to $2 million and would have lifted this financial burden off of Mac. However, when his children suggested this, he did not want to hear it. Like I said, he was extremely passionate about this apple orchard. He loved the fact that it was the McNamara family apple orchard. And the 
whole aesthetic really that came with it. So he was not willing to sell the apple orchard. He would have rather been financially struggling than sell the apple orchard. However, this was not the only thing that was discussed in these emails back and forth. Back and forth in these emails, Max's granddaughter, his own granddaughter, actually accused him of molesting her when she was a little girl. Now that might seem completely out of left field for you considering they're talking back and forth about selling the apple orchard. So why is his granddaughter all of a sudden accusing him of molesting her? However, in these emails back and forth, not only only were they discussing the apple orchard but the entire family was discussing their disappointment in Mac and choosing Tracy over them and moving everything over into her name and how blindsided they felt by that so these emails were kind of opening up an entire can of worms and in those can of worms included Mac's granddaughter accusing him of molestation now according to Tracy she said that Mac was absolutely blindsided by that accusation and he was very very hurt by it however Mac's granddaughter continued to say that that did happen that was true and she wasn't backing down from that accusation but now let's talk about Christmas Day December 25th 2014 now on this particular day Mac and Tracy were working at their bed and breakfast in Belize and after working at their bed and breakfast they ended up going back to their house and Tracy was cooking dinner while Mac was sending off some emails now at one point Mac got up from sending his emails and he walked to the front porch, which is when Tracy said she heard a very loud gunshot. Now hearing a gunshot wasn't necessarily an out of the ordinary situation considering the fact that Mac did have a gun and he quite often according to Tracy would walk out to the front porch and fire the gun so he would shoot the gun to basically scare off any animals or if they thought that someone was outside he would go out and shoot the gun to scare anything that was there away. So when Tracy heard the gunshot that's what she thought Mac was doing. Now again this is all from the perspective of of Tracy because Tracy was the only one there along with Mac. So because of this, Tracy did not go out and check on Mac right away. She actually waited a little bit and when she finally went out to see why Mac was taking so long outside, she said she walked out to the front porch and that is when she saw Mac laying on his side unresponsive. However, at first, Tracy said that she thought that Mac was just playing a joke on her and playing a prank on her, considering there was no blood around him. So she didn't think anything of it. So she kind of went over to him and started telling him, you know, get up, Mac, get up. But he was not getting up. And then Tracy said once she realized that Mac wasn't getting up and something was really wrong, she started hysterically screaming and calling out for help. However, weirdly enough, even though she was calling out for help, Tracy did not call 911 for three hours after she found Mac laying outside. That's three whole hours that she left Mac just laying there outside. And during those three hours, Tracy said she laid down next to him, put a blanket over the two of them and just laid there with him. And the reason she said she didn't call 911 was because she said she quote, didn't think about it. I didn't know, end quote. And what she's referring to on the I didn't know portion of that quote is the fact that they were in Belize and she didn't necessarily know how to call the paramedics in Belize. She didn't know how the police system worked. She didn't know how to call for help. And so that's why it took her three hours to do so. Three whole hours after this shooting incident is when paramedics arrived on the scene and they put Mac into an ambulance and transported him to the hospital where he officially passed away at 11.30 p.m. on December 25th, 2014. And mind you, that was about five hours since he had been shot. Now, while Tracy was at the hospital with Mac while this was all going down, she ended up reaching out to Mac's son, Caleb, and she told him what had happened. He was completely shocked and was asking Tracy all of these questions, such as, did he try to kill himself? Was this suicide? And Tracy didn't have an answer for him to that. She said, I don't know. I don't know why he would try and kill himself. Caleb then asked if he fell down a flight of stairs and really just trying to get any answer that he could at that point because 
because he's all of a sudden being told that his dad has died and he has no explanation for it so he's really just trying to get answers out of tracy and tracy can't really give him any answers because she just doesn't know so at that point that same night on december 25th caleb booked a flight out to belize and got there the next night now after caleb arrived that following day authorities wanted to speak to tracy because she was the only one there so authorities tried to speak with her and that is when she told authorities that she has no idea really what happened she explained the situation and she finally came to the conclusion and told authorities that she believed that mac took his own life due to his financial problems as well as his family struggles that he was having something that backed this story up was that on the day of his death mac wrote an email to his son caleb and said i've loved being your dad loved being past tense and so authorities thought that because he said loved it could have been that he was planning on ending his own life because loved is past tense now after speaking to tracy authorities also wanted to talk to caleb they had a separate questioning with caleb and after the police questioned caleb and talked to him caleb went to tracy and told her that it was in her best interest to leave belize as soon as she could tracy to this day says she doesn't know what was spoken of in caleb's conversation with authorities however caleb just said that it was in her best interest to not be there any longer and to get out as soon as possible and tracy took his advice she packed up immediately and traveled back to soap lake washington so just two weeks after tracy went back to soap lake is when the forensic reports for max death were released and this was absolutely shocking now before we get into what the forensic report said i want to take a moment and thank our sponsors for today's video all right, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I leave the house, I do the checklist in my head. It's phone, keys, and a wallet. But it is time to add one more thing before you walk out the door. Birdie is the newest essential addition to your routine. Birdie is a personal safety alarm designed to be easy to carry and simple to use. When you activate your Birdie with a quick pull, the alarm will emit a loud 130 decibel siren and flashing strobe light to help deter an attack. Unlike pepper spray or other deterrents, Birdie is no danger to you. You can feel confident to use it without the worry. And Birdie goes wherever you do. The alarm comes in multiple colors and has a brass keychain, so you can just attach it to your keys or bag. Over 300,000 Birdie alarms have been sold, and they have thousands of five-star reviews. Join the flock today for a safer tomorrow you guys i am absolutely obsessed with my birdie i carry it on my keychain and they have so many different colors for you to choose from so no matter what you will find a birdie that you like safety for me has always been something that's incredibly important and birdie has made my life so much easier by having a foolproof way to keep myself safe no matter where I am. So if you guys want to try out Birdie today, right now She's Birdie is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she's birdie.com slash killer. Go to she's birdie spelled S-H-E-S B-I-R-D-I-E dot com slash killer for 15% off your first purchase. That's she's birdie.com slash killer. All right, you guys, we are back talking about BetterHelp. You guys have definitely heard me talk about BetterHelp before. If you've never heard of BetterHelp, BetterHelp is an online counseling service that provides you with professional counseling in the comfort of your own home. Once you sign up with BetterHelp, you will then take a short quiz that will then match you with a counselor that's best deemed to fit your needs. BetterHelp has counselors that specialize in so many different areas, including anxiety, depression, grief, LGBTQ plus matters, trauma, sleeping issues, and more. Once you get matched with your counselor that's best deemed to fit your needs, you'll be able to set up sessions with your counselor. You can either do FaceTime, Zoom, phone call, or you can just text your counselor too. And if for whatever reason you want to change your counselor at any time, you will be able to do so free of charge. BetterHelp is available worldwide and financial aid is available for those who qualify. I personally love BetterHelp. I'm someone who's always been a huge advocate for mental health and getting help when you need it and not being afraid to ask for help. And if you want to try out BetterHelp today, you can do so by going to betterhelp.com instinct. And when you use the promo code instinct, 
instinct, you will receive 10% off your first month using BetterHelp. That is betterhelp.com slash instinct for 10% off your first month. You guys know that true crime is my passion, but even now and then, I need the occasional break. So when I feel like a mental palate cleanser, my go-to refresher is Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a game you can play on your phone filled with challenging puzzles that engage your brain and are so incredibly fun at the same time. Best Fiends was made for adults to play. However, it's a casual game with no age requirement. I'm currently on level 400. 127 right now and I've also got all of my friends to play it as well. Personally, one of my favorite parts about Best Fiends is how bright the colors are on the game. And Best Fiends does not require internet to play, so you don't need to worry about Wi-Fi access or using cellular data. Download Best Fiends for free on the App Store or Google Play. That's Best Fiends, friends without the R. Message me on Twitter or Instagram to share your progress and enjoy. You guys, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite true crime podcasts. I actually get messages from you guys a lot asking what other true crime podcasts I suggest, and I have one for you. It's called American Nightmare Murder in a Safe Place, and it investigates the vicious rape and murder of 50-year-old nurse Sherry Crandall inside the D.C. area hospital where she worked. Her murder mystified not only the police, but her family and the community for the past two decades. Police have DNA evidence and fingerprints, even a witness to the attack. However, still no suspect yet. With the help of modern DNA testing and tips from listeners of murder in a safe place, the police are closer than ever to solving the murder. Researched and reported by award-winning DC journalist Paul Wagner, hear the story unfold and join in the search to find Sherry Crandall's vicious killer. Again, you guys, I absolutely love this podcast. I am totally hooked on it, and I know you guys will love it as well. So if you're looking for your latest binge, you just found it. Check out the American nightmare series on apple podcasts spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts so let's talk about these forensic reports now once these forensic reports were released tracy nessel was named a suspect in mac mcnamara's murder now the reports claimed that there was blood spatter on tracy's shirt which could indicate that tracy was the one who fired the gun and that is how the blood got transferred onto her shirt the reports also claimed that there was no blood spatter or gun residue found on Mac's hands and even more than that it came back claiming that the person who was holding the firearm that shot mac had to have been shorter than him and they measured that from where the wound was on the back of his head they said that based off of where that was whoever shot the gun had to have been shorter than him the reports strictly state quote he was not the one who fired the shot causing the wound end quote however according to tracy's attorney he has arguments to dispute all of this he says that mac's blood was on tracy's shirt was because tracy went over to help mac after she discovered him laying on the ground and in trying to help him she got blood on her shirt he also said that the reason that mac didn't have any blood or gunpowder residue on his hands was because it was raining this particular day and he was laying out for three hours and because he was laying out for three Three hours the rain washed away all of the blood and gunpowder residue and that is why there wasn't any that was found on him now according to the McNamara family lawyer they a hundred percent believe that Tracy murdered Mac and her motivation behind it was financial gain everything of Max was put into her name and without Mac in the picture Tracy would finally be able to get all of that money that Mac left for her at the time of his death there were two life insurance policies that Mac had on himself that were worth up to $500,000. And both of those life insurance policies were also put in Tracy's name. Now it gets so much more twisted from here. Now after Mac's death, Tracy's own mother came forward. And once she heard that Mac's granddaughter had been accusing him of molestation, Tracy's mother also came forward and claimed that Mac 
molested Tracy when Tracy was a young girl. Now, mind you, again, Tracy and Mac have a 22 year age difference. Mac was 22 years older than Tracy. However, Tracy says that she has no recollection of this happening, nor does she believe that it ever happened. And the McNamara family lawyer has come forward and said that all of those allegations against him are not true and they're completely false. All the molestation accusations against him are false. However, let's talk about why Mac McNamara would ever have the possibility or be in the situation where he could have taken advantage of Tracy like that because Tracy's father was not in the picture. The reason that Mac McNamara would have ever had the opportunity to take advantage of Tracy like that is because Mac McNamara also dated Tracy's mother. Not only did he date and marry Tracy, he also dated her mother and her mother also dated Mac's brother and had a child with him. Let me just explain the family tree here for you for a second. So you have Mac and McNamara and Denny McNamara. Then you have Tracy and Tracy's mother. Denny McNamara dated Tracy's mother and had Tracy. After that, Tracy's mother dated Mac McNamara and then they broke up. And then after dating Tracy's mother, later in life, Mac McNamara dates his brother's daughter, Tracy Nessel. It doesn't stop there, but before we get into that, a quote from Tracy's attorney, which mind you, Tracy does not believe that this happened, but even when asked if she's absolutely sure that this didn't happen, a direct quote from her was, I don't absolutely know anything, whether he did or he didn't, end quote. So, I mean, she's not 100% certain either way. Mind you, it is very difficult to remember memories from that long ago. Again, she's not 100% sitting there saying, I know for a fact that my husband slash uncle didn't molest Bless me when I was a child. She's not saying that. Now, according to Tracy, she said that the relationship that Mac had with her mother does not really bother her. She says that she knows it was a long time ago and she never really knew the extent of their relationship. So because of that, she was able to just kind of let it go. However, according to Tracy's attorney who knows Tracy's mother, he says that Tracy's mother is a very, very wise woman and quote, sometimes mothers know more than daughters, end quote. So even though he's Tracy's attorney, it seems as if he's also on Tracy's mother's side on that stance. Now to make things even more twisted here, let's talk about the night that Caleb flew to Belize. So after finding out about his father's death, Caleb flew to Belize to identify the body, to talk to authorities. And while he was there, he stayed at Tracy and his father's home. Tracy is not only Caleb's stepmom, but she is also his first cousin. So that's the dynamic there. And while Caleb stayed at Tracy and his father's home, according to Tracy, Tracy and Caleb slept together when he flew out to Belize and stayed with her for the night. Now, I do wanna say that Caleb denies these allegations that Tracy made against him. However, Tracy says that once Caleb flew to Belize, they took a shower together and were involved. Now, the reason that this isn't so far-fetched and so hard to believe is because this would not be the first time that Tracy and Caleb were involved. Tracy and Caleb had an on and off sexual relationship from 1999 to 2012, all the way up until she started dating Mac, his father slash her uncle. Once Tracy moved to North Carolina, she would go back to Soap Lake and visit her grandparents and stay there for the summers. And during the summers, her and Caleb McNamara would hook up essentially for all of those years, for 13 years leading up to when Mac and Tracy got together. Now, according to Tracy, she said Mac was aware of the relationship that Tracy had with Caleb slash her first cousin, and it immensely bothered him. She said that he would have nightmares about it, and he absolutely hated, hated thinking about it. Even though Caleb did deny sleeping with Tracy the night that he flew out to Belize, he has not denied the 13 year on and off sexual relationship that he had with Tracy. Now, regardless of whatever you think 
happened to Mac, whether it was suicide or homicide, Tracy has never been charged. And I'm pretty sure, according to my research, she is living in Soap Lake, Washington currently. She has certain travel restrictions and she's not allowed to leave Soap Lake. However, I believe she is still there. Now, the McNamara side of the family is fully convinced that Tracy murdered Mac in cold blood to get all of his financial assets. They believe that she seduced him into transferring over all of his property into her name. And once everything was in her name, the will, the apple orchard, all of his pieces of land, the bed and breakfast, everything was in her name is when she decided to murder Mac to get the money. However, Tracy claims that none of this is true and that this was suicide and Mac took his own life. Now, personally, where I stand on this is I believe Tracy murdered Mac. Despite how twisted and convoluted and sickening and disgusting this case is in terms of the incest and the family crossover, I do believe that Tracy murdered Mac. There was even a point where I wondered if this was a plan between Caleb and Tracy so that the two of them could get all of his money. Considering that they've had a relationship for 13 years and then all of a sudden Tracy goes and starts dating his dad. Honestly, to me, I wondered if Caleb and Tracy created this whole plan and this whole plot to be able to gain all of Mac's financial wealth and then Tracy just murdered him. However, that is all just alleged. It's a theory, it's a hypothetical. It's just something that I've thought of and I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this one. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And with that being said, you guys, that is all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another true crime video here on my YouTube channel. I'll be back in a couple days with a brand new one and until Till then, stay safe guys. Bye.